Hello my soccer universe to the review of a rather eventful Serie A weekend. Uh, there are many trends that we thought we saw last week were kind of a little bit reversed and there were many many matchups that could decide positions, you know, uh, quite some changes. A lot to talk about there. Um, but also we have the crazy title race in Turkey that we will, uh, that we will have a look at and at the end I'll always put in a little bit grease as well. But we will start in Serie A. I am wearing Lazio, you know the result. Uh, they are one of the big winners of this weekend. And yeah, uh, there are a few others as well. So let's dig right into it. It started rather innocuously in uh, with a 2-1 win of Lecce over Spal, which is already a pretty big result for them in uh, the relegation battle, uh, allowing them to get a little bit of relief. Bologna, who had this great showing at Roma last weekend, uh, 3-0 home loss to Genoa. Surely helped that when they were 1-0 down already, there was a red card given. Uh, there was a second player uh, sent off late, but at that time it was already 3-0 for Genoa. Genoa getting back into business a little bit. Yeah, they are also a relegation threatened team. But the first game that I watched was, of course, Atalanta-Roma. This was kind of the battle for fourth, where Atalanta really could deal a big blow to Roma. And eventually they did, but it was not all that straightforward. Because um, how much did I see? I, I, I think as I was watching over the 20, 20 minutes, I found it a rather even game. We guess with Atalanta, maybe a little bit... Um, the more dangerous team, but Roma was in there. Roma had chances. Um, and I thought if they can find the lead, it might actually um, catapult them uh, to a win similar to what Milan did last season around this time of the year to Atalanta. And then Palomino cannot, uh, makes a defensive error and ends up in a sprint with Dzeko, that Dzeko always was going to win, and he gives Roma a 1-0 lead. And... Well, I think a draw would have been the more just result. Um, it was not undeserved for Roma to get that lead. And uh, Roma take, taking the lead usually meant that they get at least a point. Hmm. Atalanta did similar things as they did last uh, week to Fiorentina by uh, getting an early equalizer. And it was Pal Palomino of all people who after a uh, corner the ball falls to him and he can slot it home. And then 10 minutes later, Pajalic... It's Ilicic or Pajalic that make the goals, makes it 2-1. And Roma could not find a way back. Atalanta, again, got their gears rolling. They're a really good, really fun team to watch, I have to say. So, uh, end up 2-1 winners. Roma, yeah, had a little bit, but it was too little. And in the end, I think Atalanta got a deserved victory. Uh, Sander started with a goalless draw between Udine and Verona. Then Juventus plays without Ronaldo, you know, preparing for the Champions League, keeping him fit. But to be honest, it was a very slow pace and so on. And in the end, yes, they created some chances at the Ball and Iguin. Yes, but it's Brescia. And as although I like Brescia a lot, this is a team that you have to play off the park. They did not do that. It actually needed some uh, help from the referee. No, 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 not really some bombheadedness by a player, Aya, who within five minutes gets two yellow cards. Uh, first one, okay, second one, you don't go in the tackle like this. It was unfortunately a clear yellow card. Gives a free kick and Dybala takes the free kick uh, really nicely. Yes, the young goalkeeper was his corner in a way, but on the other side, this was right off the post. I don't think he could have done anything by it. And he vindicated himself. If you say this was an error, he vindicated himself a little bit later with a great save. But a second half, there was only one winner in Cuadrado with a very cheeky finish. Makes it 2-0. Gives Juventus a rather yeah, laborious victory, but putting on the pressure for Lazio into this win, everyone expected it, but uh, with this win, Juve went three clear of Inter, four clear of Lazio before they play, and basically it meant this was a do or die game, definitely for Lazio at that point. At the same time, Fiorentina finds the goal scoring gear that. Uh, it's always in them, but I didn't really see much. Sampdoria completely uh, f 
you know, at first completely um, shot themselves in the foot with an own goal by Thorsby and then giving away a penalty that was not initially given, but um, I think that 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 was, was the one with the elbow to the cheek was then given by VAR. Vlahovic uh, scores that one and just two minutes later similar situation the referee doesn't give the penalty they go to VAR it is given and it's a second penalty for Chiesa and it's 3-0 uh, and that of course broke Sampdoria uh, Vlahovic and Chiesa add two more before uh, Gabbiadini late pulls one back again I think it was the and, and of course there were red cards in there as well for Badel in the 44th so I mean and later on Fiorentina got also one no, there was the first one for Mutu, Muru, and then for Badel, uh, for Fior, for Fiorentina. So um, Mutu made the, uh, Muru, Muru, not Mutu, made uh, the challenge on the penalty, got sent off, and then penalty, goal, and so on. So it all went pear-shaped for some stuff on some Torre very quickly. I wouldn't put too much in there, but you know, 5-1 looks like a serious result. Parma gets a 1-0 win over Sassuolo, and guess who scored? Gervinho, who was actually banned from training because he was a little bit upset that a move uh, to Asia fell apart because they insisted on him staying there. <sighs> I understand for Gervinho this was probably a good thing, but um, he's still one of the best players for Parma. I really wanted to watch Cagliari Napoli. I ended up watching a little bit, but to be honest, I hate those Napoli juries so much and I didn't expect them. I didn't expect that Cagliari is playing the Centenary or whatever jerseys uh, that is, you know, with the brush stroke uh, cross and the stamp as a crest. Ever since they're playing the, with those, they're really fall, fall, falling away and it uh, was, a, from what I saw, a tightish game. But uh, Mertens gets the breakthrough and I think Napoli could have added on one or two more if they won it. Stage set, big game, Lazio Inter. I conveniently have to say I, I was aware of it, but I'm not uh, uh, that the T for was the friendship between Lazio and Inter, which makes this title race now for me even more uh, harder. But I'm I'll let you know later on. I think Lazio would be my uh, team that I would like to win this title. To be honest, uh, big stage. And we got a very interesting game in the first half. Yes, it was tactically, but it was not tactically stifle each other. It was tactically that um, Lazio controlled the center of the pitch and Inter controlled uh, the sides, which made for very interesting watching because if you control the center, you always have the feeling that Lazio has more of the game, but Inter was so dangerous over the counter attack. Uh, and they were almost mirror images otherwise against each other. You always had one of the strikers dropping off to take one of the um, uh, creative midfielders or so on, meaning that uh, Immobile was always near Brozovic and Lautaro Martinez uh, went to Lucas Leva. Uh, the latter one is a little bit, I, I, I would have wanted Conte to uh, be a little bit more courageous, but seemingly. Um, Inter was definitely more happy with a draw than Lazio would have been. Uh, but a draw was something that I always thought was a little bit on the books. Uh, I think the first big chance fell to Lazio where Milinkovic Savic, who had a great game. He doesn't have necessarily the great season that he had two years ago, but he had a great game and um, takes a shot, hits the bar. But it was really the first half. Lazio having more of the game, Inter being super dangerous on the counter-attack. Uh, there was, uh, I think, a chance by Lukaku uh, in there, of course. But uh, it was a game that was very delicately hanging in the balance. And then one of those count counter-attacks where Ashley Young placed the ball out to Kandreva. Kandreva pulled, uh, pulled it in, the goalkeeper kind of lets it bounce away, it falls right to Ashley Young and he makes it 1-0 for Inter right at halftime and for the fourth minute um, and takes the lead for Inter and I'm thinking hmm, will Inter now just sh sh shut it off is this a blow to Lazio no Inzaghi makes some adjustments kind of uh, lets his uh, outside defenders the wingers um, 
also track the wingers of um, uh, Lazio a little bit, uh, of Inter a little bit more, um, and neutralizes the threat on, on, on the sides. And now Lazio can only play via the center and really moving, uh, uh, pull, pulling the pressure on Inter. Yes, it helps that they got a penalty, pretty <laughs> clear penalty, I have to say, uh, and Immobile can equalize in the 50th, but then uh, Lazio's dominance really became, Inter was not as dangerous anymore, going um, over the, all, 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 all the sides, and then after a corner kick, ball, falls to Malinkovic Savic, who really nicely controls it. I mean, he touches with his foot and nicely puts it into the net. This was a great individual effort, I have to say. Gives Lazio the lead, and Lazio looked actually rather safe at that point, although Inter would have gotten the equalizer through Lautaro, but uh, was correctly ruled out for offside, and Lazio run away. They outplayed Inter in the second half and run away uh, winners, and at that point, you have to say, Lazio is fully, fully, fully in this title race. And I know many people uh, are wondering, is Lazio, they don't have the great squad that's like Juve or Inter. Juve definitely has the best squad, but they're a mess uh, in the structure. Inter is buying players left and right. What I like about Lazio, they might not have a deep squad, but uh, those guys have been playing together for a, quite a while. And this looks like it's an organically grown squad that is really um, finding its rhythm now. And maybe they, it's not a Leicester-like upset, but um, it reminds me a little bit. Everyone is expecting them to drop away, but you know, they have beaten Inter now at home. They've beaten Juve. I think they're not afraid of going to Juventus again. And you know, Inter-Juve, that will be an interesting matchup where Lazio could actually take the lead. On the other side, Lazio has an away game to Atalanta. Inter does have the same, uh, I don't know about Juve now, uh, but you know, uh, Atalanta at the moment is a, comes relatively rare, so that's maybe something you don't want to have. And then uh, yesterday, Milan-Torino. That's a game that should not have been as tight as, as, as it was. I mean, Milan was not a great game. Milan had good control over the game, I thought, but again, not taking their chances. Rebic in the 25th game, make makes it 1 0. Uh, then Torino comes up a little bit, but I have to say, Milan played solid overall. But what they were missing is to they cannot find the second goal. And Torino is always one of those opponents that you should beat, but they rarely beat at home. Uh, Ibrahimovic, glorious chance. Castillejo, glorious chance. But at the 60th, it should have been done and dusted. They cannot find the breakthrough for the second goal. And that's the one thing that I have to say. Uh, is not in favor of Milan on the other side. Yes, they played uh, Inter, they played Juve, so uh, maybe a little bit tiredness set in. Still, you gotta take your chances. Um, I, it was good to see Paqueta back. Did not have the greatest game, but I think he was solid over, overall. Uh, Jalanogli, of course, was uh, on uh, in the stand. So I think um, Paqueta, I really would like him to get something going uh, as well. But all, but but overall, I walked away. Yes, happy with the win, but rather disappointed uh, with the way because you could have won easily three 0 there. Torino was not bad; they had their danger moments, but overall, Milan controlled that game, and you should have gotten more out of that. If we look at the table, Juventus is back on top, Lazio point behind, Inter third. If the Lazio Inter game would have gone the other way. Lazio, I think, would have had a four-point gap. That would have been too much. But now, it's a three-way race. Atalanta, ten, yeah, is off the pace. But uh, it's if they can beat Lazio and Inter at home, they are right in it as well. And then you know, Juve looks vulnerable, especially if they concentrate now on the Champions League. But Atalanta is now clear six points of Roma, uh, who are, at the moment is sold their spot, but Roma doesn't look good. Three consecutive losses, and I'm, I'm afraid they will fall out of the Europa League spots. Uh, Roma really does not look good. Verona keeps up the good form, is now in sixth level on points with Parma and Milan. Verona, if they would have won against in Udine, would have looked uh, differently. And Napoli is also in there. Um, Bologna now. I think Bologna will not go in there. Here's now the midfield, and I think we have to say uh, 
Torino Udine, maybe not quite yet, but of starting Lecce, Sampdoria, this is where really a relegation struggle comes. And it's Lecce, the two Genoa teams, and I think Brescia and Spal look like they will go down again, my personal opinion. Let's briefly look at Turkey, where we had two big games. Bajak Shehir beats Bejiktas, uh, a goal in the 50th uh, minute. Uh, gives Bajakshi here the win and after them losing uh, last weekend they are getting back into in, into the picture. Uh, Fenerbahce loses in Ankara which uh, we'll see will not really help them move forward in the table but uh, the big one was Trabzon against Sivospor, uh, two against one, and it ends 2-1 for second place team Trabzon actually having a 2-0 lead already at the half, Sivospor only late getting uh, the goal and yeah it seems that this story is also coming to an end in addition Galatasaray is winning 1-0 and that means that in the table now we have a new leader Trabzonspor a point ahead of Bajakshi here and Gala is also in there so uh, we have three uh, teams in within two points Sivaspor is still in there and yeah if Fenerbahce would have won they would also be in that uh, picture but we have Four teams, and I would not say, I would say, even down to Besiktas, everyone has a chance in this title race. This is probably the tightest one in Europe. Not necessarily the best one, but it's definitely the tightest one. In Greece, same old, same old. The two big boys, Pauk and Olympiakos, uh, get their wins. Uh, also, Panathinaikos gets a win. And Aik beats uh, Aris away from home, which probably was the big matchup this weekend. So, uh, in that table, we have Olympiakos and Pauk far away. And then we have the next two. And the rest will probably not play for Europe unless there's some of the others win a uh, Greek Cup or something like that. Well, that was my tour through Southeastern Europe. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these. And I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye. Thank you.